I'm getting yours out early mainly because um, I feel like there are some messages here that might be timely and so maybe watching this early would be helpful so that's why I'm trying to get this out um, you know not too early but you know just in time because um, I was going to do cancers but um, I felt compelled to do this one for you so anyways let me stop talking about that and um, when I was shuffling out the spread, um, I saw an image, and um, I guess it's kind of unexpected and kind of disturbing. So um, I closed my eyes, and I was shuffling out the, the cards, and then I saw, like, uh, ants crawling up my forearms. Ants crawling up, okay? And um, then the, like, the forearms, it became, like, its own entity. Like, it became, like, an, an, a separate image. And then the person that had the ants crawling up their arms, they kind of, you know, dust it off. Like, they have to dust it off. They have to um, basically, like, swat the, the, the ants away. So when I saw this image, I was thinking um, there is a sense of restlessness within you. Because, you know, the, the whole expression about um, feeling like you have to move, feeling like you have to do something, feeling a little bit antsy or restless, okay? Um, I feel like that's what's happening here. And it's really telling you to sit still. It's telling you to calm down. It's telling you to be level-headed. And it's telling you to not make any rash or irrational or impulsive decisions, and um, I'm also sensing as well, there is an element here about, you know, swatting things away, sort of like, let it roll off you. Don't be personally invested in a situation or don't take a situation personally because it's not meant to be personal. So if you're dealing with criticism, if you're dealing with censorship, if you're dealing with somebody who might be... Um, you know, they're, they're, they're constantly complaining or they're constantly taking little jabs at you because with the ants, you know, some of the smaller ants, they can have a really powerful and painful bite. So it's more of an irritation. So if you're around someone who's irritable um, and they're constantly like they're irritable and kind of they complain about everybody or they complain about every little thing. You just kind of have to, you know, let it fall off you and not let it affect you. I know that's easier said than done, but you also need to just let it um, roll off your back and especially don't internalize it and don't say to yourself, like, I wonder if they're mean to me because of something I did. I wonder if they're upset with me. I wonder if I did something wrong. No, you didn't do anything wrong. That person is just, you know, irritable. The person is just like this with everybody. And so don't let their bad attitude, you know, um, don't let their bad attitude um, dampen your self-esteem, okay? So um, let me just go into this spread. So here's what I'm feeling. I feel like there is somebody that you're that is constantly around you and this energy is new. Okay, so it's, it's, it's almost like you're sharing space, sharing work, or sharing, it's like prox proximity-wise, they're very, very close to you. So I'm almost seeing this room, and there are like two people in it. And you know, you guys need a lot of space. You guys get claustrophobic very, very easily. You guys do not like routines. You guys do not like small confines. And you especially don't like to... Um, I just feel like, you know, having to work with other people just doesn't really jive well with your independent energy. And I feel like for whatever reason, something is happening this week where you are... There's one person specifically, and I feel like for some of you, it could be a family member. For others, it could be like a colleague that you have to do a project with, that, you know, uh, you both have to do something together. And um, for others, I feel like it, it might be, you know, a, a new boss, like having to answer to a new boss or having to figure out I wonder what this person is about. I wonder how 
uh, they operate. I wonder what's the best method for dealing with them. So I see a little bit of apprehension from your end because I feel to a certain extent, um, you know, this person's opinion of you matters to you. And so I feel like because of that, you it, it indicates to me that you do care about this person. And um, I also feel like it's just a little bit hard. And I, I also feel like there's this element here about, you know, I'm going to do this portion of it and then you do the other portion and then we'll convene at the end, you know. And um, when I feel like it... it if you were to do that, the end product is going to be very, very disjointed. So there's some warning here about, you know, sticking it out. And if we need to do this, both of us need to do it together. So I feel like it's a, if it's a colleague, if, it's a, if you're in an academic environment, you have to do group work. If we're going to uh, do it well, we need to stick it out together. From the beginning to end, both people or all people need to be on board. Otherwise, the end result is going to be bad and the end result is going to be very disjointed, okay? And uh, I'm also sensing as well, some of you are kind of giving this as an ultimatum. Like, you're in it with me 100% or you're not in it with me at all. So if you want me, you need to, you know, put in the, the effort. We need to be in it 100% all the way or not at all. So I feel like it's a mantra that you are, uh, it's like the battle cry, the war cry for this week. But also it's something that you're, you're giving somebody that, that ultimatum, that peace of your mind. And that, you know, unflinching, unwavering um, uh, want like, I, this is what I want. If you can't give me what I want, I'm not going to have you in my life. So that's what I feel is happening here, where it's, it's almost like, you know, really putting your foot down and no longer being easygoing. And, you know, you guys are, I feel you guys are quite easygoing. You're not so rigid and stubborn and, and things like that. I mean, you, you like your space and, and all. And if people give you your space, then great. But what I feel, though, is um, a lot of the times, you know, you're, you're very live and let live. But I feel like if, if you're dealing with somebody whose actions affect you directly, that's really when it's almost like coming to the realization that somebody's actions affect you. And so you kind of put your foot down and you're just like, this is what I want. If you can't give me what I want, if you can't be in it 100%, if you're not sharing the responsibilities, if you're not, you know, um, if you're not on board 100%, then, you know, you, you might as well exit the picture right now. So I, I feel like you're, you're being firm and I feel you're setting boundaries and I feel like you're being very, very clear about where things are headed and you're being very, very clear about, you know, shutting off your emotions and just thinking about a situation very logically. And I feel like you're saying this to somebody that you still care a great deal for. Okay. Um, the other thing that's coming into the picture so we have here a water sign. This is a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. This is somebody that has, um, I almost feel like, I almost feel like you bring something very, very pure, very, very new into their life. Okay, so it's almost like, let, let's just say, if in the past they have been really, um, if they've been very, very unfaithful, if they've been very, very noncommittal, I feel almost like you bring this, not, not only are they attracted to you because of, you know, passion and chemistry and because, you know, they're, they're physically attracted to you, but I almost feel like the way that you are, they find it very refreshing. And they find the way that you are, the carefree energy, the, the fact that, you know, you don't really impose expectations on them in the past. So whatever it was in the past or whatever the situation might have been, they find you very refreshing. It's because you don't have ulterior motives when you're dealing with them. 
you don't uh, impose, you know, expectations on them. And I also feel like you're not one, like you're so independent that you're not clingy with this person, that you, you're you not like needy with them and you can do your own thing while they're off doing their own thing. And so they find that really, really refreshing. And then I also feel like um, if they have been very noncommittal, very unfaithful or had an unfaithful streak in the past, um, they want to commit to you. It's, it's almost like you're bringing that sense of stability. Like, let's, it's almost like I'm, I'm hearing, you know, I wonder what it's like to settle down, to have a family, to raise children, to have, you know, the house with the white picket fence. I wonder what that feels like with this Sagittarius. And I feel almost like this is a person that is really afraid of commitment because they're afraid of, um, uh, monotony like they're they're afraid that you know we're gonna fall into a rut we're gonna have children and then our lives are gonna revolve around the children and we're gonna have like you know the house in the suburbs and the SUV and the dogs and the white picket fence and everything just seems like life stops so that's why they're really really afraid of marriage they're really afraid of commitment they might have been through it and they're just like you know uh, life stops when you have children maybe that's why they're so commitment phobic but because you're so fun because like being with you is really fun is very optimistic is very expansive you can take like the most mundane activity you know cleaning the house and then I feel like with you guys you turn on your music to to make the chore less boring right let's be honest no one likes to clean, especially, you know, not Sagittarius people. And then you start dancing and, you know, you make like something very, very mundane, very tedious, very fun. And I feel because of that, they feel like if I were with the Sagittarius, they could make something extraordinary, you know, out of the mundane. And because of that, they're not afraid to settle down with you because they know that no matter what, you're going to make it fun. And so it doesn't feel like a chore. It doesn't feel like the situation will fall into a rut. And it doesn't feel like they're, they're whatever their irrational fears about commitment, they're realizing that it's irrational. So I feel like there's something here. Um, and once again, you know, the energy can be vice versa, but I feel there is somebody that is wanting your attention. So I feel it more coming through from the other side, from the other people, wanting your attention, wanting to, you know, um, offer a commitment, wanting to commit, wanting to really wanting to tell you, you know, I've changed or this is something I didn't want before, but after meeting you, I really want it. So it's almost like a big gesture, a big proposal, a big declaration of uh, you mean a lot to me. So that, that's what I'm feeling here. And um, I'm also sensing as well. I'm, I'm also sensing for others of you that are not dealing with that situation. Um, there's an element about somebody begging for forgiveness there's somebody begging for forgiveness and I don't know which direction this is playing out in. Is it from the other person or is it from the Sagittarius? So let me see here. This came out first. There is somebody begging for forgiveness. And I feel like it's coming through from the other person. And um, I have a lot of earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Okay. Um, what I'm feeling is, I, I feel like you might have dealt with somebody that really... Um, I feel like you might have dealt with somebody and, you know, this can be romantic or friendship or whatever, however it resonates with you, because I do feel like there is a, a big, you know, I'm sorry, 
please forgive me that type of a, a, a way that that type of a uh, communication um, if it's a romantic partner I feel like this is somebody that hurt you this was somebody that made a lot of promises that they could not follow through this is somebody that you know you had really high hopes and expectations for and I feel like they um, I'm, I'm seeing like lying by omission and lying by omission is sort of like you know you start dating somebody five six months in and then they're like oh by the way you know I'm I'm, um, I'm separated but I'm not divorced you know I told you I was divorced but I'm actually only separated and we're still living together okay so, so it's like they chose not to tell you certain things and they kept it hidden and then when they reveal it you can't tell them that oh they've been lying you know they, they lie by omission they just kept that part of the story hidden you know or like um, you find out they have like five kids with with you know they it, it, it's somebody that withheld some information vital information and I feel like you might have walked away from that in the past and now they're coming in for an apology so if that's like a romantic um, partner I feel like you've moved away from it you're no longer wanting to entertain that person and I honestly feel like the apology is very, very half-assed, okay? Um, I feel like they're, they could, and you know, because that's the nature of lying by omission. Uh, they could tell you, oh, I didn't really lie. You just never asked. You know, you never asked if I had children. And so I never gave you the, the, the information. Or they could say, like, you, you never asked if I was divorced. You know, and um, or you never or you asked if I was divorced and I said in the process, but you never asked if I'm still living with the ex or whatever. So that's how I feel this situation playing out. And I feel so, you know, begging for forgiveness. This is what's showing it to me. You're very, very um, stoic and hard when you're dealing with this person. I feel like they're no longer, it was one of those things where it was like lying is unacceptable or it was one of those deal breakers. Everyone has their deal breakers. These are the things that I will not tolerate. So if you commit these acts or if you, um, for whatever reason, if you breach these conditions, we cannot go back. And I feel like that's what's happened here. It could be, you know, somebody being unfaithful. If you tell yourself, you know, I will never stay in a situation where someone cheats on me, that's the deal breaker, and they cheat on you, that's the moment where you are going to have to toughen up and, you know, stick to your standards, okay? Or it could be in a work situation where you are negotiating a salary and they're like, oh, I'm going to give you a raise, I'm going to give you a raise, I'm going to give you a raise. And you're like, if you don't give me a raise by the end of the year, then I'm walking away. And now we go into January and they're like, I'm sorry, we don't have the money to give you a raise. And so you're going to have to stick by your values. So I feel there's something here where things were promised but never delivered. It could be that salary increase. And then I also feel where uh, a situation where somebody definitely wants you back because um, I feel like, you know, they've been around the block. They, they, they thought they could enjoy more out of life, being by themselves or being with other people, whatever the case is. And they're coming back around mainly because they see the value in you. They see the worth and they, they also see that you're somebody that, you know, they really want to be with. I have an, um, a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. And um, I feel like this is a, a person that is in your life to, um, and, and, you know, I, I feel like, you know, lessons in general flow both ways. You know, if there is ever a person lessons go both ways and what I feel happening is uh, they might teach you to be a little bit more soft-hearted to be a little bit less harsh with your judgment and then likewise you could be teaching them you know to like so not be in that emotional space and to be a little bit more I want to say 
ambitious, driven, and to be a little bit more sort of like more boundary setting, okay? Because um, water signs in general, except Scorpios, water sign Pisces and Cancers are, are very, very bad with boundaries. Um, they don't know how to, you know, set up these walls to protect themselves. So I feel like if it's a water sign, you teach them to be, you're teaching them to be like more boundary setting because for you, you guys really value independence and you don't like it when other people just, you know, unexpectedly just in, um, impose themselves upon you or like expect you to do certain things, even if you're not really close to them, like that sense of entitlement, you don't like that. And I feel like you're teaching them to set boundaries. You're teaching them to be a little bit more bold with telling people how they feel to be a little bit more like, you know, don't worry about hurting people's feelings, just spit out the truth. So there's a lot of learning that's happening between the two of you. And I feel like they're definitely learning from you. And then I also see, you know, uh, earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, somebody that might be aware they're catching a whiff or catching news or getting some information that you might be single or, you know, I feel like they might be single as well and they're coming into the picture. So I feel like there's a change in a relationship status and then somebody is all like, let me just, you know, go back to this person. Let me just uh, give this a try. So I, I feel like there might have been a misconnection, a misconnection like um, somebody that really wanted to be with you, but you weren't single at the time or um, whatever circumstances you might have been at, at a distance from each other or um, you really wanted to be with them, but they weren't available. And so I feel like a little bit of time has lapsed and now somebody's single and they're trying to, you know, gauge interest. Okay. So I feel like it can go both ways. Um, there definitely were three people involved. Like, um, it was, it, it got a little bit complicated, too many people involved. And so that there's that element about, there's that element about, you know, misconnections and poor timing because, um, you both were at different points in your life or you both were, you know, in positions where you couldn't act on this connection. And so there's a, a second chance. Um, I'm also feeling as well, there is some news here regarding, it's almost like somebody who's not being a team player. So I feel like this is uh, potentially in the work environment where everyone is, you know, um, everyone knows what they're supposed to do. Everyone knows where they're supposed to be at what time. So it's almost like the, the work environment, it's ran like a well-oiled machine. Everything works. And then there's one person that's like, um, a, a, a wild card it, and you know, they don't know what they're supposed to do. So then they have to ask everybody every single step of the way. And I feel like it slows down operations. And then I also feel there's somebody who's like trying to create conflict in an environment. It's almost like they come to work and they're, tr uh, they're scheming, like, who should I, you know, that's what it feels like, like from your end, you're just like, you have so much free time. You just come to work and you sit there and scheme. Who should I pick on today? Or who should I undermine today? Or who should I, uh, you know, aggravate today? And it's like, no, they, they're, you know, once again, don't take things personally. They're just like this with everybody. They like to create drama. And um, there's a special type of people that needs that, okay? It, it's almost like they're, they're lonely. They're not able to get the recognition in a positive way. So they're settling for negative attention. That's what I feel is happening. And... Um, you know, don't, don't give it any attention. Don't feed into it. And especially, you know, learn to shake it off. Um, so the last thing that I'm going to end it with here is, um, don't get restless. Don't get restless. Okay. So this is sort of like sit still, take care of your responsibilities, do what you need to do. But at the same time, before you act, before you act out in particular, 
you want to really look at what you're doing and, and really think about, is this the best course of action? Are there other possibilities that I should consider? Okay, so there's a lot of antsiness and I see a lot of momentum and energy and I feel like for some of you, honestly, um, you might be living in an environment where you're snowed in, you know, like um, where there's like inclement weather, where there's a lot of snow or a lot of rain and you're kind of stuck in one place. So physically, you want to be out and about. You want, you have a lot of pent up energy, you know. Um, do some meditation. Um, if not, you know, drive yourself to a gym if you can. If it's cold outside and you want to go running but you can't, you know, join a gym temporarily or even doing like uh, sit-ups, push-ups in your um, area or even um, meditation and, uh, of course, you know, uh, reading, whatever it is to get your mind off it, okay? Because I see a lot of restlessness and I see you being in a small confined space and I feel you being a little bit uncomfortable, okay? So I hope the reading is helpful for you guys, Sagittarius. Um, there are a lot of good things, but I, I just feel like there are a lot of things that you're considering and you feel the need to act, but... You don't really need to act. You don't really need to act. You just kind of need to let it uh, sit and marinate on it a little bit. Okay. 